I'm here to talk about Preact, as everyone saw. And okay, I'm just going to start by introducing myself. My name is Sarah. Um, um, I work at YLD. We're a consulting company in London and Lisbon. And we're also hiring remote, so if you're working remotely. And I basically just make useless stuff on the internet. And that's my Twitter handle if you like that kind of weird stuff. I'm from Portugal. And um, we won the Euro, and that's kind of like how it felt like. Because uh, we still don't know how the fuck that happened, but cool. OK, but I'm here to talk about Preact. So just a hands up, or you can just stand up, whatever, whatever chills you. Uh, how many of you have heard of Preact? OK, cool, cool. <laughs> Everyone in the front is just like, damn. <laughs> 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 this is why I'm in the front. I need to learn. Okay. How many of you have actually used Preact more than 10 minutes? Nice, OK, that's not, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. But that's why I'm here, I guess. And I know what your first question is, and I have a shit ton of stickers. You can grab them. I got like 50. I also have Babel stickers, because Sven gave them to me. So if you were afraid to ask Sven. <laughs> OK, OK, so this is like the intro thingy, which the first thing that I'm going to talk about is what is Preact. And I'm going to talk about who made it, because I will then reference the person by name. And you're like, who the fuck's that? So I'm going to tell you who, who the fuck's that. And I'm going to tell you some things about why you should consider it, consider it, consider, use it. And uh, then I'm going to talk about a little bit about the future, what they're preparing for the next couple of releases. And we're going to do a little demo. Demo is, a, I use this word very loosely, about the CLI. OK, so what is Preact? So like it states on their GitHub, don't worry, not all of the things are just screenshots from GitHub. So as it states on GitHub, it's a fast three kilobyte alternative to React. It mimics the same ES25 API that React does. So the render, the component it mounts, all of that, all of that cool stuff. It has the, the good thing about being three kilobytes long. I will go some more over this in the next slides. And the, I think a very good thing is that it has familiar React APIs. So you already know how to write this. And it's just completely compatible with anything else with Preact Compact. So what Preact Compact does is that it's a comp compatibility layer for Preact and React. So everything that you write in Preact, you can import React stuff and just like magic. Not really magic. So is it production ready? Because like uh, React is only used by like small companies like Facebook. So you kind of know that it's production ready. But is Preact production ready? So a lot of huge companies use it like Uber and Pepsi and Groupon and Lyft. I think they're competing. Okay. The, the smallest bundle size, that's the one we're going to use. And <laughs> so a lot of big companies actually use Preact in production. I am actually also using in production. Well, there's no production yet, but hopefully there will be. And uh, so yeah, that's, that's my statement. So who made Preact? So there's this guy called Jason, which I cannot take ser serious for the sake of my life because of this photo. Uh, you can make sure that he's a very nice guy. He's Canadian, so you're going to be fine. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go a little bit into why you should think about using Preact. Like, I don't want to be a dick about this, so why you should think about maybe using Preact. Okay, so first good thing that I think about Preact that exists is the community is a very good community. So I've never had a lot of experience in the, the core team of React, but I've had some experience in the core team of Preact, and everyone is just super nice, like overly nice, like Starbucks kind of nice. <laughs> Weirdly kind of nice, just like, what the fuck? Um, everyone is just super incredible, and everyone's just like there to help you, which is, I think, a very, very cool thing that I've learned. And there's actually, oh yeah, there's actually, uh, funny, I use this term very loosely again. The, a, very, a funny story that happened with me in Preact, why I started using Preact. So in my old company, we had this website that was in Angular 1.3, I think. It's very good. And um, we had like this directive for all the payment methods. And then we had to do another payment method. And me and another guy, who was also a very smart individual, we were like, we should do this in React, dude. He was like, yeah, we should totally do this in React. I bet integrating this is going to be like super easy. Three days later, we were both crying alone in our beds. And um, I reached out on, on Twitter, and I was like, can somebody please help me? Like, I seriously want to quit this job. I want to become an Uber driver. And this is actually something that I would actually like to do. I don't know why people laugh at my dreams, but OK. Thanks, guys. And um, so Jason was the one that came to me. He was like, so this worked, and this worked, and you should try this. And it worked. Like, 
three hours later, which was good for someone who just spent three days on it, it actually worked. And I was like, oh, this guy has a framework. I should try it out. So it kind of saved my life and my development career, my mental health mainly. So I tried out the framework and I just started using it all the time. A little update on that app. So now, so there's like this Angular app that has a directive that loads the React app with Polymer. Yeah, that wasn't there anymore. But I was like, what? OK, so this is the, as you can see, Preact also has a Slack. It's on their web page, it's preactjs.com. And when someone's Slack is muted, you know that a lot of stuff's going on. And so this, you have a general Slack. And there's a lot of community behind this. And the good thing that I see in this is that it's all made by the same people, which I think is a good thing. Because, like, so the React router, for example, is not made by the same people who make React. So they have to stay in sync all the time to make sure that, not, that React router is not trying to do something that React no longer supports, for example. So in this case, they're all, mostly all part of the core team. So they all know where the, where the same thing is going, which is, I think is pretty cool. So you have the Preact router as well, which is a very simple router. You have the Preact CLI, which I will demo in a bit. Preact Compat, which is the Compat, comp you know what I mean, for Preact. And so this is what I wanted to talk about a, a little. So it's very performant. So Preact is three kilobytes long, and it was made with performance in mind. And you're like, OK, Sarah, but you're here to sell Preact. I don't make any money out of this. I wish. But I do have stats. And the first thing that I want to explicitly say is that an amount of kilobytes in JS is not the same thing as in the same amount of kilobytes in images. Because the browser has to download the JS, but then it also has to compile it and not compile it, parse it. And in older devices, this may be a problem. So I used to have like this really shitty BQ because I break all my phones. So I bought like a $150 phone. And this is way more noticeable in those types of phones because they take a long time to actually parse your JavaScript because they're shit. So I have some benchmarks, actually. So this is um, the to-do MVC benchmark. So it basically adds 100 to-dos and checks them up and deletes them. And this is on Firefox. I was trying to use Firefox for a bit. It killed my, my CPU, but OK. So, um, so Preact, I also added Vue, because I think, I think Vue is like the kitten of web development. Like you can't really hate on Vue. It's hard. So Preact takes about 100. The smallest is the biggest in this case. That's what she, OK. So 163 milliseconds, Vue takes about 195. And Preact 16 takes about 535 milliseconds. And right now, I'm also going to solve one of the old the problems. Chrome is faster. There you go. So Chrome takes about 58 milliseconds. And then you still have Vue, then Vanilla, and then React. So Preact is much faster than, OK, this is, somebody's going to like crucify me for this. Is, slightly faster than React. You can uh, clearly see a big difference in this. And you could clearly see like a bigger difference with a uh, like, shittier device, basically. This is also some benchmarks, but you can't really read them. But it basically says that React takes 37 seconds to render something that Preact takes 37 seconds, and React takes 39. And you can see the, the small differences in it. Uh, okay. So another reason you should use it is that it's React compatible. One of the problems that you usually, you, like a human, usually has when starting with a new framework is that there are not a lot of tools. And you're not going to fool me, because you need components. You need other people's things. Trying to do one thing without any dependencies. See how far that gets you. So you can use any React component with Preact. So all you need to do is install Preact Compat. And I just want to. Oh, look, now CLI is just updated. That's cool. I wonder what they did. So you can add Preact Compat. And all you need to do, this is in Webpack, is just like go to Webpack and be like, so you're looking for React, F that. Go to Preact Compat. And the same thing for, uh, for React DOM. And I would say no, not putting the third thing would be a good thing. Because if you don't put it in something breaks, you need to update that. Like React create class has been long dead. So. I would say not put that and see if something breaks and see if you can update it. And if you can't, well, put it in. If you can, that would be better because it will break eventually because it's a really old thing. OK, so let's go slightly over what's included in Preact. Yes, I added like 
shit ton of like Instagram photos with purple on it. So ES6 glass components and all of the awesome life cycle methods. Uh, Preax still does not have componented catch. There is a PR to make it work, so hopefully in the future it will have componented catch and literally will have all the life cycle methods. I order components, all the composers you could ever want and need. It obviously has functional components, so those kinds of things you just receive props and spit out some JSX, the most normal thing when you're using stuff like Apollo or anything like that. You also have context, which in some cases you don't want to pass the data through all of the components, so you can just use the context API. Uh, you have refs, we all use it, don't lie. And the actual, the virtual DOM diffing that Preact does is, is very simple, but it's very effective. So you could see that from the time that it took Chrome and Firefox to actually parse it. And it's a very good one. So it's very decent and they're making new changes to it to even make it faster than it already is. So what is added on Preact? Like what is the things that they have that React doesn't? So you have this one thing that I think is just the best thing that you could ever want in life. I don't have really high standards, as you can see. I, I want to work on Uber, for fuck's sake. So you have props and state in the render method. So you have a class component that has a lot of lifecycle methods on it. And then you have the render thing. And then you have those two lines, two damn lines at the top, which is like const open curly braces this slash this and comma this equals this dot state. And then you have the same thing for this dot props. Well, React actually passes it through, Preact actually passes it through the context, and the first argument that you get is the props, and then you get the state, and then you get the context. So you do something like render, and then you can deconstruct all the props, you can deconstruct all the state, and then you can deconstruct all the context. And it works really, really nicely. And I think it's just like one of those little things that you can now do arrow functions in render. That's pretty much, that's all I wanted it for. Oh shit, I had a thing. Okay, so this is, React, you don't actually need to do the constructor anymore, but so you get an idea. So basically, const name equals this dot props, and this is Preact. So you get the props, and then you get the state, and you can deconstruct it all you want, and it still works. It's a pretty sweet thing. So it does a thing which is the batching of DOM updates, which are used using a set timeout. You can also use request animation frame, which is something that is very heavily used in the creation of animations in JS for being like one frame. And this batching works really well. You, you have this weird thing where you can use CSS class, which is like you don't have to use CSS class name. Class is actually preferred. You can also do this in React and you get an error. This is not like the biggest thing that has ever happened to the world. But there's this cool thing where you can just copy and paste code from CodePen and it works. So that's good. Yeah, we all do that. So uh, it has a really good component and elements recycling and pulling, like it doesn't stray. It doesn't like keep going on pulling and recycling everything. It just has a really good balance with that. And now, like, because not, not everything is good, and the company behind Hoover is not that good, I'm gonna tell you what's missing in Preact. So you don't have dangerously set any HTML, but like, do you do you really want it? Like, do you really want this? I've broken so many things with this. There is something called Preact Markup. And what it does is basically does the same thing as dangerously set in your HTML, but it checks your HTML. So you can do Preact markup, and then you send it the markup that you want. And if that markup is invalid because your content team screwed up, you can uh, give it a default, basically. So this is the default that's supposed to be here. If this works, it's like a try-catch thing. Uh, syntactic events, it's not, it doesn't actually exist, so it just attaches things. So because Preact browser support target does not require all this extra thing, Preact just uses the add event listener that comes by default with any browser. And since I talked about browser support, we have Preact supports all the modern browsers, so including IE9, so modern. Okay, so Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Edge, and IE9+. Plus. Obviously not Opera, who, who here has worked with Opera Mini, by the way? Has anyone worked with Opera Mini? <laughs> What? What does Opera Mini actually support? Flexbox! Uh, I am not even kidding you right now. Like, it doesn't support font face, but supports Flexbox. It's just random. It's just completely random. <laughs> like, the way it handles JS is like, you send them a JS file, it's like, okay, cool, I'm gonna run this. And then, like, you have to go back to JS file, it's like, I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> and just, you have no JS file. So, I've worked with it, in case, like, the hate didn't show it off. So, the future of React is bright and purple. 
So, so as we speak, not probably as we speak, but so Jason is currently working on a faster, Jason and all of the core contributors, currently working on a faster diffing algorithm, so it'd actually be way faster than it is, and it's actually pretty fast. So array returns, which is something that we now have in React and we love, it's just something that will be added in the upcoming versions of React. It also have fragment support, which I found like one month ago, and now there's a shit ton of fragments all over my code. So it's better than a diff. And it also has async diffing, which I think is pretty cool. So it can be, it can go in the, in the background and it doesn't actually have to interrupt your app. If you didn't, did you everyone get that joke? Because no one laughed. That's cool. So let's talk about the Preact CLI. Okay, so I'm going to open up Hyper and I'm going to zoom this up. Can everyone? No, nope, more, okay. Can everyone read what's at the top? Because I fucked up my DSHR file. OK, cool. So I am going to, so the first thing that you actually need to do is npm install globally the Preact CLI. I already have it installed. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a good speaker. So I'm just going to go with Preact, and I'm going to go up. OK, it's like I prepared this. So Preact create will create a new app for you. And the default, what it means is that it's the template that you're using. So basically, you have like three official templates. You can create your own, of course. It recognizes GitHub URL, so that's pretty cool. So the default just gives you a simple router and some fairly simple stuff. And you give it a name, and then you specify any things that you want for it. For, it. for example, it doesn't come predefined with Git. So if you wanted to do git init, you just dash dash git. The only thing that I'm going to do is dash dash yarn, and we'll install the dependencies with yarn instead of using npm. We're not, fi we're not talking about this. And so it gives me like this little snarky remark, which is like, I'm assuming you meant this. What if I didn't? So there's this Preact.js templates thing, and this is the default. So it will basically just tell you, OK, I assume that you meant these defaults and not some random default that you created. And it will install all the dependencies. OK, so I'm just going to come here and cd into React Vienna and open this up in code while that stuff installs. And we'll take a look at the code. Open this up in code, take a look at the code. OK, so. I know more. I'm on it. So you have more or no more? More? OK. Dude, you should wear glasses, by the way. OK, so this is the app. Uh, all you get in here is that you import your styles or don't if you're using anything that is like CSS and JS. And you import app from components.app and then export it. So you can just export default from components.app. So let's go to the app right here. And let me save to get, OK. So you can import H and components from Preact. H is basically the render method that you get from Preact. And component is the exact same thing. And you also import a router to create some routes. And we'll take a look how to create some routes. And you import some, some other things, like okay, the other and the profile, which we'll see after this is, oh, there we go. Yarn start. If I can type. Couldn't find it. Are you happy now? Is this annoying anyone? <laughs> there we go. OK, so localhost 8080. OK, so localhost 8080. Remove this. OK, and what you get out of default is exactly this. So get a purple thing at the, at the top. And then you get this three routes. You get the home route. You get profile. Uh, profile. And in this case, basically what you do is you hard code the name. So profile, you hard code the name, never mind. So in this case, it's, it's, um, it's what you put at the top. Yeah, it's what, you, it's what you decide. And then you have this, which is profile.john, which is, no, this one is what you put at the top, and this one is hard coded. Sorry about that. And this comes from the URL, so I can change this to React or something. And this is a profile for the username React. So this is like, this is, it works pretty well. OK, so what we do is we define a div with an ID of app. And then we have the, the header, which I will show you. And then we have this route, which on change, will just change the current URL to whatever we want. And then we have path slash. Paths by default are exact in, uh, in, in Preact. They're not like, like a React router, which by default are not exact. 
And then you do things a little bit different. So usually in React Router, which is the one that I'm most used to, you have your route, and then you define what component you want in it. And here it does the opposite. So you define your component, and then you say, I want this component to be present in here. So path profile, and then you hard code the user. Because you, you are, yeah, that's it. And then you have path profile, and th then you say, OK, I want this user to be anything that I want in life. I want it to be happy and have, to, and have a family. And that's fine. So you don't hard code one, so you have to specify in the URL which user you actually want to see the profile for. And now you do that. So you have, oh, shit, sorry. Co so you have the header component, which should be written as a pure function. That's the error right here. And then you have, so preact app, that's the thing that we saw. And then, so as you can see, you have import link from preact router slash match. And then you just simply say href to slash profile. So there's no two, there's just href. And then you say to slash profile. And that one is hard coded as the user me. And then you, you just say link and to John if I want to add something else. So if I want to come here and add like Sarah something, then I would get to the app. And I did not change this part. And I would just click Sarah and then it would go there. So it's pretty smooth experience with this router. I haven't had any problems with it. It also has an active class name. And so the routes are just simple routes. So in here, you're just spitting out JSX. And in here, it like shows you how to actually have state, which you just declared the state. In React, you can do that as well now. And in here, you have this, which the, the user comes, since it's all, all built by the same people, the user comes directly from the props, not from routes that match that something that you have to deconstruct four times. So it comes directly from the props, and then you have time and count, which you're defining up the top. So as you can see, this is very uh, a lot of syntax that you're already used to. And this is pretty much what I wanted to show you, because you get a pretty good base. This usually hits around 99, 100 on Lighthouse. It, it comes pre-configured with um, server-side rendering for the first page. You can configure for more, for the home page, sorry. It already comes with a service worker, minifier, everything that you could want. You there's also a, a lot of plugins for it, and you can create a, a preact.config.js and then just change all the Webpack stuff that you want. So there's also a lot of, so if you want to install Flow, for example, there's a plugin. If you just want to, like, small stuff, there is already a plugin that will just let you do that. Okay, so let me come over here and present again. There we go. OK, so I want to give a shout out to a friend of mine that is making this really cool thing. So as a person who works remotely, he is making an app called There, which will have a free version. It basically tells you where all your friends are, if you have any. And um, it will tell you what time it is in their current time zone. I work for the US, so my, the company that I work for is based on the US. So this is actually helpful, so you don't ping them at 7 AM and wake them up. And so he's making this. It's at there.pm. And uh, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and it should come out by the end of the month. I wanted to give him a shout out because I think this is amazing work, and it will definitely help me. And I think it will help a lot of people that either have friends on the internet or work remotely. So this is my talk. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Andre. You're welcome. <laughs> it's the only photo that I had. <laughs> What is that beautiful coffee shop there? <laughs> okay, so does anyone have any questions or do you just want food? What, Glenn? Uh, if, if you mean it will preact to like stop using it as well? Yeah. I don't th I don't think so. I don't think so. Like you can stop using it if you want. I don't think. The, I don't remember the last time I used component to receive props. To be honest, I know that I did, and it was some hacky stuff. Uh, but so the idea is that so the fragments and something is something that is really useful. So they want to add it because it's really useful and something that I honestly miss when I'm working with Preact and then when I'm working with React and then switch back to Preact. But in terms of things getting removed, like unless people are like, I don't want this. No one uses it. It's more like a poll. Like, so you get to the Slack, for example, and it's like, so React, remove this. Do you people use it? If people say yes, then it will probably not get removed. So it's more like human contact, human contact thing. Yes? Is there an equivalent to like the React context, like passing down some properties without explicitly? 
you have you have context here. It, it works the same way as, as React. Sorry, I speak sometimes slowly, slightly fast, just slightly. So context still works here. You still have context. You can so in the in the render thing that you get past, like the three options, you get props, you get uh, you get state, and then you get context as well. You can also deconstruct from the context if you want. Does that does that answer? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Does it work with server side rendering? Yeah. Uh, the Preact CLI comes with server side rendering, so yeah, it does. It does work with server side rendering, no problem. It only comes with server side rendering on the home page. Let me just clarify that. Yes. Go. So the bigger part of the way in React Dom is the synthetic events. Uh, and yeah, go, 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 sorry. And I tried testing React on like my basic usage of, of React, nothing too crazy. And I've never run into an issue not having the synthetic events. Have you ever run into an issue? I have never run into an issue not having the synthetic events, honestly. And most of the weight of React Dom is that. Because React in itself is like three kilobytes as well. But React Dom is like 22 because it's packed with stuff for IE8, which it should be an opt-in thing. Like you don't most of the times you don't even need it. And it dropped the for IE8, right? Uh, React? I think it did. It did? Then why are they still using all the, the synthetic events? I got no answer for you. <laughs> because the uh, Preact supports IE9 plus, so and it doesn't have any synthetic events. So yeah, most of the weight is from that and never run into issues with it. Thank you for using Preact, man. Okay. Does anyone else have any other? Glenn? What are, what are the things that you miss uh, when you, uh, when you're using Preact? Like, oh. Are any anyone? Sorry? Are there any drawbacks that you? Uh, okay, so the drawbacks that I, like, lately that I've had is that it doesn't support fragments and array returns, which I think is a serious drawback. And so. You have Preact, which is very small, but then you have to have Preact Compact, because there are not a lot of things made for Preact. So I think a drawback is that either you make bindings for all the things that you use. So either I sit down and be like, OK, I'm going to fork style components, and I'm going to make bindings for Preact, or I have to use Preact Compact. It already comes predefined in the, um, in the Preact CLI, but it's something that I would like to see like, the community building more bindings for it and just changing it. Because if you want to use Redux, I think Redux actually has bindings for Preact. But if you want to use something that is not as well known as Redux, you have to have Preact Compact, which I think is a little bit of a slide down. And I think those are the main two issues that I've had, honestly. And the already returns will be resolved. And I hope that with more community, people will get more components just purely written in Preact, which will be really cool. Yes. I think it's three kilobytes as well. Oh, okay. so I think it's three. Where? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Import something from Preact Compact. The moment of truth. It's 4.8. This is it. OK, cool. Does anyone else have any other questions? Who said damn, by the way? <laughs> No one is raising. React. What? Can you React? Am I importing React? Can you import React? React. Just for comparison. Just for I don't have React installed, I think. Wait. <laughs> Ten minutes later. <laughs> oh, okay. That was actually pretty fast. So, import React from. React, so React is pretty small, it's 3.1 as well. So now let's import React from React DOM. From React DOM. So, no? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> 29.8. Yeah, that's the main issue. So React is pretty small. It's like they're both fighting for the same thing, but then you install React on which you need, and then it goes up to 29. That's the main issue right here. What do you want me to install? <laughs> what? React, like Messenger Lite. No, There's a React Lite? <laughs> what is React Lite? 
What other? What are the fuck is we on like? Oh, implementation of React as oh okay, so it's like it's like the yeah, same idea as React and R Inferno. Yes, but the tests are faster than. Oh okay. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, if you're using Webpack, it's the same idea. Okay, so let's go. Oh, React Lite does not support React 16. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's not. But I think I think Preact supports React 16. Well, oh yeah, there's a lot of people actually use Preact for the same thing. So you build in React, and then in production it just alias it, so your production build gets a tit, a tit smaller. So import. If I can write import. There we go. Dude, no. <laughs> So is it Preact? Yeah. It's, um, oh, it's still way smaller than Preact than React, yeah. Yes. Uh, well, combine them and do, um, well, I think the, the the main part why I uh, used React Lite uh, against Preact was that um, there was some blog post. It was just a blog post. No, that's a valid thing. Uh, that's completely <laughs> valid. <laughs> Oh, they're actually faster in React Lite. No, the, the tests don't pass in React. Right? Okay. Maybe some of the new stuff, like the array support. No, but this is this doesn't support React 16. No, that's completely valid. Like, there's probably something like here that they used something that. React so Preact doesn't support maybe it's like set dangerously in dangerously set in your HTML or something like that, and React Preact doesn't support it. But I've actually not know about this, and this is pretty cool. So yeah, I'll start this. This is cool. Go. No Preact comes. Sorry, I should have specified that. So when you import Preact, you also import Preact Tom. It's the same package. It's one package, yeah, yeah. So that's why like React has bindings for native and web, and Preact doesn't. For, yeah, it was for web, so it doesn't have for like VR and all the fancy stuff, and uh, React does because React is like divided, and Preact is not. Preact is just for the web, at least for now. So it's this size is for Preact and Preact Tom, which doesn't exist, but yes. Oh, didn't you raise? Yeah. Didn't you raise your arm like? No, no React VR and no React Native. No, 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 no. So only Web DOM. So is that is that it? Yes. Thank you.